Hello, this is Haka Devine, and today we are going to be reading uh, um I forgot. I didn't actually click on one yet. Okay, we're going to be reading a 2207 Dimensional Razor. Yep, that's what's going to be in the title. Totally. Or some funny summary of this article because I never titled these things by number anymore. I'm sure that's not painful. We're going to try to keep track. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into this. Item number SCP-2207. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-2207 is to be contained in a small cardboard box filled with foam within a standard, within a standard earth safe class storage locker, but not used for testing. All testing with SCP-2207 is to be done in the containment Laboratory 8803. After testing, continue Laboratory 8803 is to be contaminated and checked for damage. As of test 42, exploration by D-Class and Rare for Foundation for Earth's now OVN and SCP-2071 instance are preemptively denied. As of instance 2207-01, all tests involving 2207 are to be suspended. Description SCP-2207 is a blank brand disposable plastic knife. Testing has indicated that outside of SCP-2207's anomalous properties is is identical to other non-anomalous disposable plastic knives. When a cutting edge of SCP-2207 reaches a minimum speed of six meters per second relative to immediate surroundings. It severs local space-time, creating a rift that connects to a random alternate universe. These rifts are designated as 2207-1. Instances of, of SCP-2207-1 typically last approximately 5 minutes out, without outside intervention. And the length is equal to the distance that SCP-2207 traveled at or above 6 meters per second. Instances remain stationary after creation, but may be widened by pulling along the edges. Instances may be kept artificially open for a maximum of 24 hours by placing any material across the instance's threshold. <clears throat> After 24 hours, the SCP-2207 and one instance closes, severing any material crossing the threshold. The following is a partial abridged exploration log. See document 2207-24 for a full a log of tests, explorations, and recovered material from SCP-2207-1 instances. In all tests, a mechanical arm was used to create an SCP-2207-1 instances, and the, SP, and the SCP-2207-1 instance was propped open by a set of metal braces. It has been later determined that at least three other alternate realities accessed by different SCPs, including SCP-1165, may be the result of prior testing with SCP-2207. Let's show this exploration log. Oh, jeez, that got long. Oh, well. Date. Looks like either June 12th or December 6th in a time in the 1900s. So before 2000. Test number 10. Exploration 1. Type D-Class only. Equipped with standard recovery harness and cable. 
radio and as radio all available at level C PPE. Test time: twenty-four hours. Overview: The breach point of Universe Ten is in a hallway with white walls, fluorescent lighting, and tiled floor. A set of double doors is on the opposite side. Bob does not report any unusual sensations upon on reaching in the SCP-2207-1 instance, and is instructed to pass through the double doors. One minute into the test, D. Bob reports that he is no closer to the doors than when he started. Bill confirms this. However, 84 is a recovery cable and umbilical will have been fed through the SCP-2207-1 instance. And visual inspection from outside the instance indicates that, D, that Bob has walked halfway through the hallway. The Bob is instructed to keep moving forward and, and complies, despite mild protests. After two more minutes, Bob reports that he is still no closer to the doors. Rio confirms him, and an additional 168 meters of cable and umbilical has been fed through the ESP-22071 instance. Visual inspection from the outside of the SCP-22071 instance indicates that the 22071 has still not moved more than halfway through the hallway. At this point, point Bob is recalled from the outside of the SCP-22071 instance. Bob is seen to turn around. And Bob reports that the SCP-22071 a 2207-1 instance is much further, with video indicating a distance of approximately 250 meters. Bob runs towards the SCP-2207-1 instance with the body recall cables activated. Bob is visually seen to run in place from the exterior of the SCP-2207-1 instance. Two hundred fifty-two meters of recovery cable have been recalled after thirty seconds. Feeling the spool, research personnel begin to physically pull the on recovery cable, trying to manually recall the twenty-two oh seven. Bob reports that he is no closer than before to the SCP twenty-two oh seven one incense. Three minutes and thirty seconds into the test, the I mean, Bob is instructed to stop moving. And given the explanation that the difficulties compiled by his movement are hampering recovery efforts. An additional 108 meters of recovery cable and video umbilical is manually recalled over the next 30 seconds, with researchers knowing that they don't feel any additional weight on the other end. Video and observation from the SCP-2207 when it indicates that the 2201 looks behind him. Video shows that the double doors oh, appear to be much further than before, and Bob begins to run towards the SCP-2207-1 instance. Ten hours into the test, Bob has largely stopped his attempts at self-recovery. During this period of time, Bob was seen to alternate between running, walking, jogging, and sobbing. Expression ends after a period of 24 hours due to the forced closure of the SCP-2207-1 instance. Metal braces, the recovery cable, and the radio slash umbilical cord are severed. Bob is not recovered, and additional blank meters of recovery cable and radio slash video umbilical were recovered. Examination of the recovered cable and umbilical indicate no deviances from foundation standard apart from the anomalously added length. Date Unknown year. I'm guessing June 27th. Test number 25. Expiration 15. Type D class only, equipped with EEG cap. 
He just has a to exploration for calls after the events of test 18. See document 2207-24 for more information. Set recovery harness and cable, radio slash video umbilical, and level C PPE. Test time, 16 minutes and 32 seconds. Overview. The breach point of Universe 25 is a small out alley of a large city e of a large unnamed city. Bob reports a sensation of vertical upon on breaching the E-22071 instance. During the immediate stage of exploration, materials are, are recovered, mostly refuse. And, oh wait, no, their name isn't Bob, it's Sam. Sam reports three additional overt vertical-like sensations and an occasional stare from inhabitants of Universe 25. The latter is determined not to be breach of exploration protocol, as Sam is, is dressed in level C PPE. At approximately 8 minutes and 20 seconds into the test, Sam reports a fit sensation of vertical and levels of ambient light begin to notably diminish. Sam looks up without being directed toward the sun. The sun appears to be undergoing a solar eclipse. However, the occluding object does not pass over the sun, but instead appears to originate from the center of the sun. After 1 minute and 30 seconds, the unknown object was, has fully occluded the sun, including the corona. D2207, I mean, Sam is ordered to come back, but is unable to as the unknown occluding object appears to attract objects on the ground. Video indicates Sam, as well as other individuals, vehicles, and other objects are lifted into the air. Moving towards the unknown occluding object, the attraction force does not extend past the, the SCP-2207 instance. There is no meaningful communication from um, Sam during this period of time. The recall cable is activated and Sam is recovered within one minute. The metal brace is popping the dropping the SV-22071 instance is removed and the instance is allowed to close naturally. Nice. July 10th of an unknown year. Test number 38. Expiration 28. D class only, equipped with EEG cap, sand recovery harness and cable, radio slash radio umbilical, and level LC PPE. Test time 2 hours 38 minutes and 18 seconds. Overview The breach point of, of Universe 38 appears to be in a farmland currently growing a crop, usually similar to corn or maize, if you will. Tiffany begins limited recovery of crop samples. After one hour, Tiffany returns with gathered samples and passes through the SCP-2207 in one instance. Research personal notes note that all samples are below quality, heavily lighted, and easily destroyed by light handling. Tiffany claims that none of these samples she recovered were blighted when questioned. Review of video confirms from Tiffany's account. Tiffany is sent to recover new samples from Universe 38 after being equipped with 24 resealable biosafe sample bags. Upon breaching the SCP-2207 instance at 1 hour and 30 minutes into test, she reports that all plant life within 2 meters of SCP-2207 and 1 instance have withered. Video and observation for um, SCP-2207-1 confirms this. Tiffany notes that the wind speed is increasing and discovers a structure similar to a barn at the two hour mark. She is instructed to go inside. The interior of the barn like structure does not significantly differ from barns in working farms, being used for storage for a variety of tools and packaged plant matter. Visually similar to hay. Tiffany is instructed to gather samples of the hay like plant matter and two easily carried tools. Tiffany travels to the upper floor of the barn-like structure and approaches a window. The location of the breach point of universe or sorry, is visible due to the withered plants surrounding the incense. Observation indicates that the wind is rapidly spreading the withering or blighting effect. Tiffany reports that she hears a noise from the lower level of the barn-like structure and investigates. A male individual wearing blue overalls, a gray t-shirt, 
a hat made of, of astral-like material and carrying a rifle of unknown make and model is seen inspecting the recovery cable oh, and video slash and radio slash video umbilical. Tiffany is instructed to switch her radio to free range mode and press the quick release button on the recovery harness. Tiffany complies and is instructed to leave the barn like structure and return to the SCP 2207 in one instance. Site Blank's armed containment response unit is all to containment laboratory 8803 as a precautionary measure. At 2 hours and 20 minutes, Tiffany reports that she has left the barn, but the individual from the barn had spotted her and started firing his rifle. Gunshots and yelling in an unknown language can be heard over the radio. The recall cable is activated. Tiffany reaches the ESCP-22 Oh seven one instance at two hours and thirty minutes into the e exploration. The unknown individual is seen entering the withered slash blight area and falls to the ground before it or site blanks arm containment response unit can fire. The individual's body is subsequently seen to rapidly mummify. Tiffany is instructed to recover the unknown individual body and eventually complies. The incense is allowed to naturally close. <sighs> the second set of recover samples does not show signs of the lighting effect that they first had. The unknown individual was found to be carrying identification in a wallet, it along with several examples of paper currency and a set of photos, presumably of family members. All information in the wallet is in an unknown and currently undeciphered script. The recovered tools were determined to be functionally identical to a dulled hand sight and a hacksaw. Tiffany died shortly after the test, modifying 30 minutes after exploration, likely due to the lighting effect. The effect was found to not be communicable from on Tiffany's body, the body of the unknown individual from Universe 38, or any recovered material. July 14, test 42, expiration 32. Type D class only, equipped with EEG cap, sand recovery harness and cable, radio slash radio umbilical, and level C PPE. Test time 24 hours. Overview. The breach point of Universe 42 is a grassy field, with the skyline of an unknown city visible across approximately 2 to 3 kilometers away from the breach point. Mm. Samantha is instructed to pass through the SCP-2207-1 instance. Samantha is seen to breach the SCP-2201 to breach SCP-2207-1 and subsequently appears to freeze in place. Once fully through. V video feed is still operational and requests to ascertain S to ascertain D20 Samantha as status are unanswered. EEG shows a sudden increase of alpha brainwave activity. The recall cable is activated after 30 seconds.
I recall snaps at the SCP-2201 instance, also separating the regular slash video uh, umbilical. Visual observation from the SCP-2201 instance shows that the umbilical all and recall cable beyond threshold remains slack. All recovery efforts are made with a variety of tools, including hooked poles. However, all attempts spell in a similar manner to the recall table. With objects quickly becoming stuck after exposure to the environment beyond the SCP-2207-1 instance, it is also discovered that the metal braces remain immobile. The expiration ends after a period of 24 hours due to the forced closure of the SCP-2207-1 instance. Metal braces and all tools used in, in the recovery attempt are severed. Samantha is not recovered. No, due to the, attri the attrition rate of D-Class and near certain in the of hostile and or dangerous conditions and it's beyond SCP-22071 instances, remote-controlled drones with audio slash video feedback are to be used for all further tests involving SCP-2207. Unknown year, July 28th, test 56, expiration 46. Type, remote control or drone with audio slash video feedback. Test time, 35 minutes and 45 seconds. Overview. The breach point of Universe 56 appears to be within a borough or small suburb outside of a large city. The drone is deployed. Within one minute, the skyscrapers of the city are seen to sag, causing a mild panic from individuals within the suburb. The sagging becomes sort of defined as the expression continues. By three minutes, the skyscrapers appear to begin melting, and the sagging effect is now seen on the houses of the suburb. A sagging effect passes to individuals after five minutes. By ten minutes, almost all of visible objects have turned into puddles, and the controller of the drone has no difficulty in controlling the drone. After fifteen minutes, the drone becomes unresponsive to controls and falls to the ground. A second drone is deployed, while video or data is still or received in the first, which progressively distorts as the exploration goes on. After 25 minutes, the controller of the second drone reports difficulties with the drone's movements. The second drone is recalled, and as no significantly new data was recorded. The metal braces are removed, and the SCP-2207-1 instance is allowed to close. An inspection of the second drone shows that all load-bearing surfaces are heavily warped, with sagging effects on the remaining surfaces. The sides of the metal braces exposed to SV-56 are found to be warped. Strength and compression tests indicate that the affected material does not deviate from non-affected material. Date. Same year, October 6. Test, 126. Expiration, 116. Type, remote control drone with audio slash video feedback. Test time, 1 hour, 21 minutes, and 36 seconds. Overview, the breach point of Universe 126 is a glade in a temperate forest. During the day, the drone is deployed, and occasional faint jagged lines are seen in the ground, sky, and air. The lines appear to be harmless to the drone. After 3 minutes, the lines are distinct enough to continuously observe, with the highest concentration forming around the SCP-22071 instance. After 10 minutes, sections of the, of the sky are rendered as blue, with the phrase, no signal, visible in white. Visual observation from um, the SCP-22071 instance and indicates that the section appears black. About 20 minutes, the entire eye is rendered in blue with the phrase no signal in white. Sunlight is still visible, though without an apparent source. Four minutes of exploration, sections of the ground are rendered in blue with the phrase no signal visible in white. One of these sections ends up here under a tree, which subsequently falls. The tree is not visible as it passes into the no signal patch. One hour into the exploration, the no signal patch begins to form in the air. The ones on the ground expanding and new ones forming. 
After an hour and 15 minutes, the drone is recalled as no signal patches make further exploration ex difficult. The controller is unable to successfully navigate the drone back. causing it to become disabled and fall to the ground. Two minutes later, a no-signal patch forms on the ground green the drone and contact is subsequently lost. The metal braces are removed from the SCP-22071 instance and it is allowed to naturally close. Incident 2207-1 in the same year, on October 6, the following letter was found addressed to site blanks administration. To whom it may concern. It has come to the attention of Blank that multiple recent and your drizzle or severance events are tied to actions performed by your organization, the SCP Foundation. As Universe AD 57 FE 2 whatever that thing is, D, the universe your or organization inhabits, has displayed a limited multiversal travel. Capability prior to these instances, it is believed that the actions performed by your organization are built without malice or for all knowledge of the resulted in repercussions. This correspondence is hereby considered or to be a lawful cease and desist order by a blank. Further actions on your organization in spite that contribute to a a young drizzle or severance event will result in one or more of the following. A federal censor or of censure of universe of this universe and its inhabitants. Fines upwards of eighty seven billion some weird uh, currency for a young drizzle or severance event. Bureau imprisonment of 3,000 stellar cycles for your drizzle or severance event. Intervention by blank armed forces. Force your drizzle severance event of, uni of this universe. For convenience, attaches a list of dates and times when your drizzle severance events have been detected. Please be sure to refer to the list so you may comply with this lawful order. We thank you for your cooperation. Signed, Sigma, Zotoxin, Office of Multiversal Incidents. After receiving the letter, all testing was halted in response. As of 2015, August 3rd, there has been no further correspondence from the entity Sigma as Azotoxin or blank. Oh dang, I guess we you can't use that knife anymore. <sighs> and that was uh, the what was it? Plastic butter knife that causes rifts so that you can go to a different end universe. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I don't know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but until then, goodbye!